so priceless. You know, we've been in Rock Lake now for many, many years, and the, the, our world is just growing. And here's the funny thing: Roger is a Rock Lake founder. Okay, that's a good word, founder. You know where I found him in Winnipeg at a First Nations conference. Not funny. He was. He got up to speak. He just spoke for about 15, 20 minutes, I think. And at the instant he spoke, I looked at my daughter and I said, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." Because when there is vision, vision for what's happening and what's about to happen, where are we going, guys? We gotta know where we're going. That makes me excited. It's like a light. This guy carries a prophetic anointing on his heart for Canada. I asked him here for a specific reason. I believe that we'll be super blessed tonight. Let's just stand up, and stretch our hands forward, and let's pray for him. Thank you, Lord, for this mighty man of God. Thank you for his wife. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in them and through them. Father, tonight is a specific, strategic night. You have an agenda, and we thank you for it. We bless God. We thank you for the fire, God, that's in his heart. And we just pray, may it come out in yes. full force. Yes. Come out in Jesus' name. Oh. Father, we soften our hearts to hear what he has to say because you are our speaker. Him and we receive him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Come on, guys. Get Glory. <laughs> Listen, there's a sound inside every one of us that's yes. being deposited by the Creator, and God wants to release that sound. When we all release a sound Come on. inside of us, what happens? I felt it tonight that you create a roar. Yes. You see, the, the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah is the uh, combined, united voices yes. of the sounds when they release their praise. Yes. And the enemy is trying to stifle that, to keep it locked up inside of us. But yes. praise God, I'm in a place tonight where that new sound is coming forth. <laughs> yes. And what happens when the lion roars? You know, when the lion roars in the forest, you know what he's saying? He's saying to everyone with an earshot that this is my territory. Yeah, that's good, Roger. <laughs> so when the lion of the tribe of Judah roars, he's declaring, the earth is mine. Yeah. The earth is mine. The earth is mine. The earth is mine. The is mine. Yeah. Manitoba is mine. Yes, amen. amen. Oh, that's good. And that roars because, see, this has bearing in our very name. Manitoba. Do you know what that word means? For some reason, I, I've traveled to many nations. I've been to national events, but in the last three or four years, especially, God's been sharpening my focus. For this province of Manitoba, Hallelujah. where we sit right in the heart of the continent, and and when you said and a few minutes ago, you know we've been uh, we've heard visions about uh, preparing. Uh, ultimately, we know all the earth will be filled yes. with, yeah. the, with the knowledge of the glory of God. Uh, but there's also an order of God. But I believe works from a home base outward. It is hard to establish a resting place for the Lord if we just go to big events and we go back home and there's nothing there. God wants every community of Manitoba to provide a resting place for Him. Yeah. So that when we come together, we will start to fill the earth. There's something more than just the individual filling of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says He has given apostles, prophets, Evangelist, pastor, and teacher for what purpose? That he might fill how much? In all things. Yes, amen. Yeah. He's talking there in the context of all the spirit of authority, the principalities and powers that have ruled, the powers of darkness that have ruled regions. And the church's role is to fill those spheres with the knowledge of God's glory. The earth belongs to him. Yes, it does. The devil is the usurper and a liar and a deceiver. And so you can see when, uh, I believe Kat was mentioning earlier tonight how voices begin to rise and say, oh, you can't, you can't sustain this, you know. 
The only reason past revivals have not been sustained is that, is that people and leaders have gone back. Like Israel did in Mount Sinai. Because the devil was trying to lie to them. But you know, they used to believe for years and years that if, if, if you ever broke the sound barrier, that there would, you know, things would just fall apart. And, and so the closer they got to breaking the sound barrier in, in the earlier days, um, uh, the closer they got to breaking that sound barrier, uh, the turbulence would increase. To the our plans would draw back in fear. But what's going to happen if we break the sound barrier? But after the first pilot broke the sound barrier, just like the first rudder that broke the four minute mile, then many, many others did it afterwards. You see, you're setting the pace. When you begin to prove that this move of God is taking place right here in the winter area, and then it's not going to diminish, but it's going to be from glory to yes. glory. It's going to encourage others to go further. Yep. Amen. And not to draw back this time. That's right. To be like the tribe of Ephraim. that was armed with, uh, and with bows and arrows, but yet they drew back in the day of battle. Well, uh, you know, how did manage to work at his name? If you go to the narrows, the manager of the narrows, something you've never been there, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's the narrows between, I think, Lake Manitoba and Lake Winnipeg, Moses in there. There's a place where, in the narrows, where the water rushes up against the shore, against the rocks, and it creates a roar, like, like the sound of a thunder. And the original, the native people of the land, they believe that was the Creator speaking. The, 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 the roar, the thunder. Well, you know, it says in Psalm 29 that the God of glory thunders. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And so, you see, there was some truth. There was a lot of idolatry. We know in the ancient traditions that there was also uh, an awareness. That the creator is somebody who speaks. And so Manitoba was referring to, uh, you know, the great spirit, the creator. But Manitoba means the place where the creator not only sits and rests, but the place of where he speaks. And, and that's why there is, there is altars and temples right around this region. Uh, where, where, the, where the ancient people of the land used to build temples uh, because they believe this is the place in the very heart of what they call Turtle Island, the very heart of North America, the center, the place of where the crater would, would rest and where he would speak. And, and so uh, it's interesting, in, in 2014, in August of 2014, Cindy Jacobs had a prophetic word when she was in Regina, Saskatchewan. And I don't know if there's even anybody from Manitoba was there in that audience, but she felt something from Manitoba so strong. And she said that there's a strong prophetic mantle on this province. She said the word of the Lord is going to be released. But she said one of the keys is that Manitoba, she said, will be the first province where native and non-native churches will unite and be reconciled. Lord. And when that happens, it's going to release a prophetic mantle that government leaders and, 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 and the world around us will be aware of the fact that there is a God that will be speaking in a way that we better listen. So that's why that even what happened last night. You know, that connection between a couple from uh, Peg was First Nation and, and the leadership here. They want to, oh, they, they're serving in Holly. They, they, they really wanted to be with me again here tonight. They, they just loved it so much last night. And uh, they were having some car troubles and things that uh, they needed to look into. But, I mean, their heart is connected to you. And this yeah. is going to increase. In fact, it's interesting that uh, 
like I keep saying, the place where we actually where she really became aware of each other was at a law thunder um, rally in, in uh, Winnipeg just last Easter, right on Easter Day. But, um, yeah, the, the, uh, well, what I want to say is that uh, there is a, now in this province, God is starting to connect us, I believe, in fulfillment of his prophetic word, uh, between the, the different regions, uh, between here, Rock Lake, Winnipeg, and relationships we have in Liverpool now are with native ministries that are connected to all the remote communities of northern Manitoba. That have, where they have the highest suicide rate, they have the highest uh, substance abuse rate, they have the highest incarceration rate, and uh, you know, I'm just hearing from Anne tonight, you know, God's doing something in the prison, say, you know? Yeah. And, and, and uh, because God's going to raise up yeah. some powerful ministries, because those people in prison, they have hit the lowest point. Yeah. And when you cry out from the lowest point you've ever been in your life, that's when you find the grace of God. Yes, amen. Because you know that you need it. And, and, uh, and then God can lift you up like He did Jesus when He descended to the Lord across the earth. Then He ascended to the right hand of the throne of grace. And so, uh, these, these communities that have sat in darkness for many years and that are causing issues, you know, why is it that that the First Nations issues are front and center in our whole nation right now where, where people are trying to understand how can we see transformation come to these communities where there's been darkness, where there's been poverty, and where there's been lack, and how can we fix this? And people are learning that for all good intentions, government programs have had, they do, it is not sufficient for what is needed. Without a real encounter yes. with the God who created us for Himself, and so uh, the uh, the prophetic word over uh, northern Manitoba is that the people who have sat in darkness, just like the northern part of Israel and the Galilee, the prophetic scripture from Isaiah nine says, the people that sat in darkness, the people that had, had huge social problems, like. Up there in the Galilee area, that's where the zealots were, and the troublemakers, and the people who wanted to get violent even, you know? And they were angry. And, and, and those in Jerusalem, they, they, they were educated. They just sort of, you know, wrote those people off thinking that they are uh, a problem. They're a problem. But the, word of, the prophetic word of the Lord is, the people that sat in darkness will see a great light. And those that have sat in the region and in the valley of death, to them is the light shone. And so, um, as, I, as I was saying, the ministries that we are connected to, both in uh, First Nations Valley Worship Center, the Fairford Sanctuary, uh, they, they, there's people like Block Thunder, there's people like Raymond and Robert McLean that have, for over 40 years, they have several generations of Christianity. But they now have a vision for something more than just having services where they have people say a sinner's prayer and then they go back and backslide every year and get saved the next year all over again. Well, yeah. no, God has something greater because the new covenant is a covenant of transformation. Yes, it is. And every year we should shine brighter with the light of Jesus because they got our minds renewed yeah. to a kingdom way of thinking. That is so good. Yeah. And we have to change the way we think. If we're going to see the glory of the Lord That's right. revealed in these communities. Yes. And so people like Walt Thunder and these evangelists, they've had 10 meetings all over the north. They've seen hundreds and hundreds of people get saved, but so little change. And so they say, we're changing now. And they see the next generation. There is something emerging. There's a greater glory coming. And even the Walt Thunder, Walt Thunder has seen Hundreds and hundreds of people say to me, people used to travel for, still do, for hundreds of miles to come to his meetings. He has a vision, and his son in law, Marty, who have just privileged the license into the ministry, 
a couple of months ago now. And, and his daughter, Rose, and his son-in-law, Marty, they represent a generation that is rising up yeah. to say, we want something greater. We honor those that have prepared the way, that have prepared the way for where we are now. Yes. In every generation, God has had a people yeah. Yeah. that have taken us further. Uh -huh. But there's not been yet a generation that has seen the fulfillment of everything that God has promised. But I believe what it means to enter into the promised land is that there's a generation arising that will see the fulfillment of everything that God has promised. It is word. And they're going to not back down. They're not going to back off. But they're going to press in. For the inheritance that has been promised to them. And so... Uh, you know, uh, Lot Thunder. Uh, Robert, I'm, I'm working with ministries now. They're all looking to the to the next show. We said we're gonna we're gonna bless these young people. Yeah. There's money to rise up in the reserves. They need to connect with the youth here in this region. Yeah. And what God is doing in Rock Lake. Yes. And and what He's doing in Steinbeck and Nigger. There is a remnant yeah. that is rising up. That's going to turn things around. And there's people of the older generation that have been in the faith for many years are going to say, yes, there's something greater. We're not just going to focus on what has passed because it did not get us to the fulfillment of everything that God has promised. And so, uh, yeah, the, 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 these relationships are starting to connect. Uh, Across this province that's trying to involve the raising up of leaders. Yes. And local churches where the glory of the Lord will be revealed in all of those high communities in Northern Manitoba. And then the glory of God is going to be revealed. God's going to use voices yes. in that from that land of darkness. They're going to rise up and they're going to declare the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen. That people in government. But we have to start to listen to those voices. Because yeah. there are people that have been to hell and back. Yeah. They've hit rock bottom. Yeah. And they have nowhere to turn to or back to the Father who created all things. And who uh, had, had a plan from before the beginning of time to have a family on earth that would reflect his glory. Yeah. A, a family that would reveal who he was. That's why he chose us to be human beings who live in a body. Yeah. Because God wants to reveal himself on earth through a body. Yeah, that's right. And so this is something more than just going to heaven after we die. It's how we will see the glory revealed and the, the glory of heaven coming to earth yeah. Yeah. in ways that all flesh will see the glory of the Lord. So, so God is releasing uh, these sounds, these songs, yes. these dances. Yes. It's just a powerful, powerful video that Cat has put together. And God's going to use it yeah. powerfully to break, to take territory in the kingdom, to, to advance the kingdom. Yeah. It's going to be a mighty use of the Lord, I believe. And, um, yeah, the, I think there's a, there's a bigger drum here. Yeah. I just want to draw attention to it. I don't know if you want the drum stick or not after this. But, um, you want to release that sound. You want to release that sound. See, the Bible says that every sound has meaning. Yes, it does. And in First Corinthians chapter fourteen, the, the word there that is uh, translated "sound" is the Greek word "phony," which can refer to a language. It can refer to a sound and uh, a language.
language and it, it, it can also be a voice. Every voice has meaning. In the kingdom of God, you have a voice. Yeah. You have a sound and you have a language. And when we all release our sound and our sound yeah. and our language, heaven breaks loose. Ah. Yes, amen. And so the enemy has been nervous about the release. One of those sounds, it says that if you have the trumpet, the shofar, issues an uncertain sound, what does that sound mean? It said, get together together and prepare yourself to battle. Yeah, that's right. Now listen to the sound of the native drum. said that every move of God has released another sound, another instrument. See, the, the, the word for sound refers not just to, yeah, it includes voices, but it also includes instruments yeah. that make sounds. You know, like in the Australian Aborigine you have the didgeridoo. Uh, that, that is like a, 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 a piece of wood that has like a tube, yeah, that has a hole in the middle, and it releases a certain sound that, that is powerful. And, and we were singing right about the nations. God has deposited sounds in every nation, and he's, the, he's deposited sounds in the first nations. Yes. Well, what do you think the meaning is of the drum? The beat of the drum? Have you ever thought of that? Well, what would the the meaning be. And, and I believe, as I talk to Native people, that when it's used as an instrument to connect with heaven, yes. it releases the heartbeat yes. of the Father. Yes. And, 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 the, and the enemy is trying to keep that sound. So when I saw this video uh, with that playing this Native drum, I said, wow, it's time. Yeah. For this sound to be released. So I'm looking forward to uh, that video getting published um, and, and seeing this sound spread. Uh, so, so you see, when, when you're birthing things in the spirit, sometimes you don't even understand initially what is the full meaning of this. But you know, the Bible says just like when you give an utterance in tongues, yeah. and if you do it in church and you don't know the meaning of it, well then who's going to be edified? You're edifying yourself. When you're speaking in tongues, but God wants to give the meaning of the sound yeah. as well. And because the word for meaning in 1 Corinthians 14 is the very same word that's used in Acts 1 and 8, where it says, You shall receive power or the dunamis. Yeah, yeah. It has a dynamite effect. <laughs> but as you open to see, that sound has meaning. I was saying to, to uh, earlier that when I was in Israel we had two, even two traditional native men with us as part of our team because when we bring uh, these expressions from the Inuit culture from the First Nations culture uh, those things connect with people in Israel and they, they want to see a Christian faith that is not being Europeanized or is not the white man's gospel, but it's actually a genuine sound that comes from within your own nation. And so, uh, we get into schools, both Palestinian schools, Jewish schools, and do the dances, the songs, to give glory and praise to the creator of the heart language of the, of the people. <clears throat> and so, this, this, when, when this nurse from the Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem heard the sound uh, of these native men doing a chant in Ojukri language. And see, if you don't understand the language, it doesn't mean very much to you. But this Jewish nurse who understands Hebrew, she came to me while they were singing. She said, I know what these guys are singing. She said, they're singing to the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is yet to come, the Almighty. 
and she understood and it had a dynamite effect that the God you believe in is the God we believe in. But we also believe through the gospel that this God has revealed himself in a personal way. Yeah, He's revealed himself in human form. He's not just a, a crater out there in outer space. But no, he is living on the earth in his people who are his temple. So, um, I want to show you uh, a bit of a PowerPoint tonight. To take a few minutes for the next something else I want to release tonight. Uh, I don't know if we're almost ready for that. But, um, it is just last weekend I was in uh, Strawberry Lake, Minnesota. And then tonight I'm here in near Winkler. Next week I'm going to be in Rock Lake. Uh, I just think you're going to see how God is joining the dots here in Manitoba between what He's done in the past and what He's doing today and what He's preparing us for in the future. Yeah, that's it. So get ready. <laughs> For the glory to be revealed in a greater way. So, uh, I want you to understand a little bit of the history. Uh, what's been going on for the last 40 years? You know, 40 years represents like a generation. And for many of us, uh, even when we came into the baptism of the Holy Spirit 40 years ago, that's about the time I entered into this. And, uh, you know, this, and God used that powerfully in our lives. In significant ways, but if you follow the journey of the children of Israel out of Egypt and, in, and, and through the wilderness and into the land of promise, you know, the initial salvation experience was represented when they put their faith in the blood of the Passover lamb, when they went through the Red Sea and came out on the other side, on the resurrection side, and speaks the water of baptism. And then 50 days later, when they encountered God in Mount Sinai, uh, it speaks of Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost. So in, in Sinai, 3,000 people were killed on, the, on, on, on that day, but on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were made alive. That's right. Yep. And they came alive spiritually. Hallelujah. So praise God for Pentecost. But you know, there were three feasts that Israel had. There was not just the Feast of Passover and the Feast of Pentecost, but there's a Feast of Tabernacles. That speaks of the feast where God is not just going to. Uh, give us a season of refreshing, not a revival that comes and goes, yeah. but this time he's going to tabernacle and dwell permanently yeah. in the midst of his people. Yeah. And and this is why this time God's been taking some time to prepare us to be able to stand the weight of his glory. Because you know, I don't think we can take it all at once. Soon. It's from glory to glory to glory to glory. But there's a generation com coming. It's going to go all the way. And so, what, uh, over the last 40 years, we have seen ministries birth that brought people into the dimension of Pentecost, the, the dimension of uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, praise God, uh, those who have put their faith in, in the blood of the Passover land, their spirit is saved, they have everything that God can ever give them already. Uh, Pentecost is really just learning to release the language that's already there yeah. inside of you. Yeah. Uh, it, it's already there. And, 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 and begin to release that language, release that sound, release that voice that's inside of you to give glory to God. And, and, and prepare the way for, for our thinking, our souls, our minds, our emotions to be so transformed that glory is going to spill out and it's going to reflect. You know, when Moses spent yeah. 40 days in the glory of God, what happened to his countenance? Oh, it began to shine. Yeah. A shiny face. But this time the glory is going to come from within instead of from without. So it will not fade like the glory of Moses' face. Right. So this time the glory of God, I think we're going to start to see the real Jesus. Woo. It's already alive. In the, this is where God is taking us, I believe. So, uh, my whole life, Mars, my wife here, is with me here tonight. Our lives were greatly impacted 40 years ago this year, in the year uh, 1977. 
when we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we lost every open door. We had even the Bible school where I graduated from close the door so that I could no longer speak. In that Bible school, even though I'd been one of the graduation speakers. And so uh, we were going to be going overseas as missionaries to Bangladesh, but they ended up telling us, well, you can have this experience, you can speak in tongues, but you cannot talk about it anymore. If you're going to stay with our mission, even people ask you about this, you're not to say anything, you know. So, and we've always wanted unity, but we said, no, that cost us a lot. We have to be real. Yeah. We have to be able to talk about yeah. what God is doing. And so, we resigned from the mission. Uh, every door was closed to us. No, every church I have spoken in up to now closed the door. Uh, you know, there used to be a church in Altona that I spoke at. Uh, that door was closed and, and in Nirvo and in the Bible school we graduated from, all doors were closed. We went to Strawberry Lake where Gerald Durst, we met Gerald Durstein, who uh, is a man who had experienced a visitation of God to the Mennonites back in 1955. And his example did a lot to encourage us. And release a prophetic word in us that God was going to take us through what we're going through, and He's going to do a mighty work among the Mennonites. Yeah. So, in this book here, in this book, Visitation of God to the Mennonites, Gerald Durstein documents an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on his Mennonite congregation in Strawberry Lake, Minnesota, during the first week of January in 1955. You got the next slide, please. On Tuesday, July the 11th, that's just three days ago, four days ago, my wife Marge and I were privileged to visit the Durstein Homestead in Strawberry Lake, where this outpouring took place in 1955, and Karen and Frank Beats, built in 1952 for Gerald and Durstein, who came from eastern Pennsylvania as missionaries to the White Earth Native Reservation in July of 1951. The, the Karen goes on to say, this is the site of an historic spiritual awakening among the Mennonites in the first week of 1955. By some accounts, now this was not the beginning of Pentecost, but Pentecost became a denomination. And this was one of the first denominational churches that had this sort of encounter with the Holy Spirit. And so by some accounts, uh, this revival marked the beginning of the charismatic renewal in America that spread worldwide from there. Just for a small group of people in Strawberry Lake. The next slide. This is a view from the living room inside of the house where many supernatural manifestations took place over a period of seven days. And the first week of 1955, first week of January 1955, upon the wall of this living room, the following information is posted on a picture frame. It says, Welcome to the Durstein Family Homestead. January 1954, Gerald Durstein, a young pastor in the White Earth Indian Reservation in northern Minnesota, asked his Old Order Mennonite congregation to fast and pray for revival. Christmas week of that same year, the Holy Spirit fell on many members of that tiny congregation, answering prayers in a manner that they had not expected. In January 1955, the revival spread into the Durstein home, and for seven days they lived in a strange and supernatural existence, fully orchestrated by God. Within the four walls of this humble home, a worldwide ministry was birthed. As prophecy came forth, and phenomenal events catapulted the Durstein family out of their traditional denomination and into global evangelism. As you walk through these rooms, imagine plain clothed Mennonites dancing in the spirit. On tiptoe, their eyes closed and arms raised. Picture teenagers slain in the spirit, speaking in an unknown in unknown tongues and prophesying future world events. And they prophesied the world by implications of what was happening. In this little room, Cheryl Gerstein himself told me just the other day, he said, I, I didn't want to hear this. Don't, don't make this bigger than it is, you know. <coughs> this is going to impact the world, you know. No, I've seen 
over the top, but he came to see this. Some of those young people that released these prophecies were so in the spirit, they were not even, that they, they just had a personal encounter with Jesus. And they were speaking right from the throne room. And when they spoke, they just take one word at a time and, and, and release it. And, and when they came back, you know, into, into consciousness in the flesh again, uh, they, they were not even, you know, aware of all that had happened when they were out of the spirit. But anyway, um, it says, as you walk through these rooms, imagine God, Michael Cove, Mennonites, dancing in the spirit, and so forth. Feel the electrifying presence of God as, as a young Gerald Gerstein plays old victory of Jesus on the panel. Imagine the jagged holes in the ceiling and a white cross emblazoned in the afterlife. They got so exuberant sometimes that they would jump, and sometimes there'd be a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> and, 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 and after the week was over, they noticed that those tiles where a hole had been punched in formed the shape of a cross right there in the living room. And uh, so it says, uh, imagine the jagged holes in the ceiling and the white cross and blazing in the aftermath. After all, be encouraged, or above all, be encouraged and rejoice in the realization that God keeps his promises and answers prayer. See, when they pray for them, they have no clue really what are we praying for. God's going to tell you, it probably won't be in the box of your finite or your carnal thinking. And so we got to remember that the Spirit of God is way bigger than our finite mind. Yes. And we have to make a decision. I'm going to let Him be God and surrender. We can do whatever He wants. Yeah. Yeah. How He wants, when He wants. So, above all, it says, be encouraged and rejoice in the realization that God keeps His promises and answers prayer, though not always in the manner that we anticipate. This home is a tribute to God's faithfulness and is dedicated to His glory and all those who are willing to follow the fire. May it be the birthplace of your own personal revival. And March and I just felt that when we were in that room just four days ago. And, and so, uh, yeah, go to the next slide now. Uh, in the ceiling, one can still vaguely see the form of a cross and the towels that were replaced after the joy of the Lord erupted in that place. Still there. Her visitation of God to the Middle East. They came up with arms of mercy to God have your way in a humble place on a native reserve. That's where this happened. Next slide. Subsequent to this, the Christian retreat in Strawberry Lake was founded on this very property of, on 40 acres of land adjacent to the Dirschstein homestead, where many thousands of people have come over the years. That's true. Many thousands of people since uh, Christian retreats started in, the, in about 1967. Many thousands have come over the years to receive salvation, baptism in the Holy Spirit, and healing. Now, many people were coming to these meetings because they had great speakers, you know. But many would just come and go, they would take the speaker. See, what's happening in Rock Lake now is that we don't care so much who the speaker is, we just want to encounter God. Yeah, that's and that can happen if you come there to be disciple and know that discipleship happens not just even in the formal services, but throughout the day, you are going to encounter God and you come there to be disciples. So, but, but anyway, uh, that's what's been happening over the last four years. But they also recognize the strawberry lake. We're coming into a new season. Yeah. So it's not going to be the way it was 40 years ago or 50 years ago. Because this time, it's not just coming to hear good speakers. It's about yourself being equipped, being yeah. built, trained, and equipped to advance God's kingdom. That's right. And so we come to church not just to sit in a pew, but Lord, I want to be equipped and empowered so I can go out. I'm so glad that I talked to some of the young people last night how many have a vision that God wants to use them to restore families. He wants to use them to go out into the various spheres of our society to bring change and to role model the kingdom of God in the midst of that. So, yeah, many people will in Strawberry Lake have received salvation, baptism, the Holy Spirit, healing. 
Next slide, please. For example, here is the building called the Hallelujah Hut, which was used for children's ministry for many years. This is where Marge and my daughter, Ruth Caroline, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at four years of age back in 1976. And that encounter, right when we were in a crisis, her face began to just be with the glory of God, and that has helped her. She's gone through many hard circumstances ever since, but she's never turned back. And it really began in this building, the Hallelujah Hut, where she received her touch from God. Oh, well, that is a great memory for us. So, among the many people who traveled to Strawberry Lake, to be refreshed over the years were many from southern Manitoba. Hence, many came to see the need for a summer camp in Manitoba, and by the summer of 1979, Rock Lake Ministries, formerly called Christian Ministry Family Camp, was birthed. So there's a connection. Yeah. And that's why we had a back, we're calling this year at Rock Lake, Back to Our Roots. I'm giving you some understanding of what uh, the camp at Rock Lake was birthed out of. It was out of this type of a vision of a family camp that was spirit filled. So during the May long weekend, of 2017, Gerald Gerstein was invited to come to Rockwood Ministries in order to reconnect the camp to its beginnings and getting back to our roots. And this is the theme for the entire summer at Rockwood Ministries this year. Notice, uh, yeah, August 2 the 2nd, Shirley Hill and Mary and Anne Cross of the next week, that's just on the phone that Anne was referring to tonight. Okay? During that May long weekend, Gerald Durstein was able to connect with Marge and myself after these 40 years. We just reconnected again this year, uh, 2017. And he invited us to come back to Strawberry Lake to share on a Sunday morning at some point during the summer of 2017. Someone else attended the meetings at Rock Lake during the May long weekend was Dylan Schultz of Altona. Yes. Since come to share his testimony in Miracle, he saw some of the young adults there catch the fire and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Lord's. Sure to come, you know, but uh, there's people like that, you know, 
uh, right in this area, who his life has impacted many, many years ago and is bearing fruit today. The message of the black was read aloud, declaring a tribute to German Beulah Dersheim. Beulah does not to be with the Lord a little over a year ago now. Founders of Christian retreat from their friends in Manitoba, Canada. There's the plaque we presented to him. And let's go on to the next one where well, you can read the text. And it says, We honor the faithfulness of Gerald and Beulah Dersheim who have exemplified their love for Jesus in so many ways over so many years. Their willingness to experience the greater depths of life and the Spirit has opened the doors for thousands of others to encounter the same. Our own journey in Manitoba was encouraged and trailblazed by their journey and that official retreat both in Strawberry Lake, Minnesota and in Bradenton, Florida. Our province and indeed the nation of Canada will never be the same. We walk in the past and roadways built by those who have gone before us. We honor you and love you forever. As I gave this back to Gerald Hughes coming down his face as he's going through some challenges again because he's in the time of transition again now to the next phase of what God is doing. But he's still following the fire. And, and, and that's the principle for all of us through times of change and transition. Wherever the fire is burning, all the fire. That's the only chance of life. We have the next picture of these thank you. This is the mural at Strawberry Lake, which in 2005 celebrated the 50th anniversary of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit there in January of 1955. Notice the words again, following the fire. 50 years. The story of the visitation of God to the Mennonites that took place in Strawberry Lake, Minnesota, in January of 1955 is now an integral part of Gerald Bernstein's biography following the fire. This is Gerald Durstein's story as told to his daughter, Joanna Durstein Lane. In, in 2017, some 62 years after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit strawberry early in 1955, Gerald Durstein is still following the fire, even as this banner is still hanging in the main auditorium there Matters that surround the auditorium of Strawberry Lake confirm the legacy of his vision, which is to continually give honor, glory, and praise to Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. It is a vision that honors the role of the Native Americans, the descendants of the original people of the land, the part they have to play in the healing of the land. It is a vision which welcomes the Holy Spirit to come with fire so that his people can come forth as gold, still rejoicing and still praising him with ever increasing glory right to the very end of the age. Speaking of following the fire, how fitting is it that a ministry called Flood and Fire Ministries is now emerging in the city of Winkler, Manitoba?
and all these things are great. But God did it Rock Lake, but God did it Strawberry Lake. What he's been doing here in Midler up until now is great. But, and I said this to Gerald Erstein. I said this to Tyler at Rock Lake. And that's why the camp there is going for a competition as well. Where, where the focus is now more on not just coming to hear good speakers and then going home and finding things to criticize and, and to complain because that is the type of thinking that Israel had in the wilderness. Yes, that's right. When their leaders didn't produce what they wanted and they didn't get uh, things didn't work out the way they expected, they would start to grumble and to murmur and complain. And God says, no, that has to stop. He said, if you're going to go to the promised land, he said, this word of God, this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. But you will meditate in this word. You will get a revelation of who you are. So you will not see the giants and the problems as bigger than God. But you start to see that God you serve is greater than any problem, than any giant, than any, well, any walled city. And so we've got to change the way we think that we're going to go in. One generation did not go in because of what? Of unbelief. Yeah, they've been saved by the, by the blood of the Passover lamb. They had come out of Egypt and they had encountered God's presence in Mount Sinai. But Mount Sinai, they said, No, uh, Moses, you go in. You, know? yeah. you encounter God. You tell us. And that's what's been like in many of our churches, even in, in, in North America, where we hire a pastor. You, you study the Bible. You tell us. But do we have that personal encounter with the living God? That's right. So you will not be deceived by the voice of any man, but you will know for yourself yeah. what God is saying. Yeah. And you will not be sidetracked or detoured from that. And so, uh, I've been teaching a 